So very, very warm welcome to everybody who is joining this pre-conference session for ALT annual conference, which is taking place in Manchester from the 6th to the 8th of September. Before we jump into our discussion, I just wanted to give you all a quick briefing on the platform we're using for the session. So you should be able to find an access panel at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Um, this should give you the option to chat with other participants and um, we've enabled mics and cameras for everyone in the room so please feel free to interact however you're most comfortable. I'd be really grateful if those in the room could maybe post an emoji or a message in the chat just so that we can check the sound is working. Also on your access panel, you should be able to, thank you very much everyone, great to see those coming in. You should be able to adjust the settings. Um, so particularly if you're not using this a lot and you're getting a lot of pings or audio notifications, this is where you can switch them off. Okay, that is all the housekeeping. And we are here for our Femme EdTech get together. Um, I'm not really, convening this. Um, I think we all are and everybody in the room is welcome to participate. Um, I was going to share with you what, what I thought we had um, to kind of be able to kick us off is to just share a couple of the things that have been happening across our network for the past uh, year and more and then open it up to everyone who wants to share anything um, on any of those points or share other um, information about how they've been getting on, anything they've been up to, work you'd like to share. It could also be more personal updates, so you're most welcome. Please feel free to jump in at any point in time. And um, we are recording this session at the moment, um, but we haven't quite decided yet whether we'll make the recording live, so feel free to express a preference around that in the chat as well. So I'm going to just start with just giving a big shout out to our open space. And Lorna, I'm not sure if you'd like to say a few words around that as well, because you are doing a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Um, but do please visit our open space if you haven't yet done so. Yeah, sure. No problem. Let me just, um, oh, my camera didn't seem to want to go on there. Hang on a sec. Yeah, Hello to the open space in there. Hi, Lorna. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah, so the, the, the FemEd Tech open space was um, a website that we set up for one of the OER conferences. OER 19, was it? I can't remember. It's, um, the last few years have been very strange. Um, we did, already, we did originally set it up to coincide with um, an OER conference, an Open Education Resources Conference, and we invited uh, people to submit, oh yes, OER 19 in Galway, thank you Francis, um, to submit any kind of writing around the theme of openness. But we'd always intended that the open space would continue to live on beyond the conference and be a space um, for all members of the FemEd Tech community um, to post um, thoughts, reflective writing, um, to host all the projects that um, the FemEd Tech Network has been involved in, such as the, um, the uh, links to the quilt, uh, the journal special issue. So the website is still there. Anyone is able to post writing to it. You can choose to post writing anonymously if you choose. Um, we felt that was very important, that we wanted to um, be able to empower members of the community to share their authentic voices um, anonymously if they felt more comfortable and safer doing that. So you are um, more than welcome to post anonymously. The posts are moderated just to ensure that there's nothing offensive gets posted. Um, Francis and I and some other members of the, um, the network do very, very lightweight moderating. It's really just um, approving anonymous posts. Um, and I also just have to give a little um, Shout out to Alan Levine. Uh, the Femed Tech Net open space is based on one of his splot templates, and that's what uh, allows us to be able to host um, writing and particularly anonymous writing. So it, 
uh, he's done a huge amount to um, support for Tech over the years. So um, enormous thanks to Alan. So yeah, please do check out um, the open space. It's great to see new writing is still being posted there. Um, it's always really inspiring uh, to, to see what comes in. And I, I particularly enjoyed seeing uh, Deb Arnold's uh, recent little reflection on curating um, the Fened Tech Twitter feed as well. So please do go in there, have a look at the writing that's already there, and you're very welcome to contribute. Thank you, Lorna. Um, before we move on, um, I wanted to dive into the special issue very briefly. I just wanted to pause to give us um, give anyone else the opportunity to jump in. So please unmute or post in the chat if you would like to contribute. Lorna, you mentioned the feminist perspectives on learning media and technology special issue. I know many of us really enjoyed reading that um, when that came out first. Um, but it's obviously still on the side as well. Um, is there anything in particular you wanted to highlight in relation to that? Or um, I don't know if anyone else in the audience um, wants to add any information around that. Yeah, I'm going to pass that one over to Francis. Is Catherine here? But Francis certainly is. Um, I wasn't that hugely involved in that particular project, um, but um, Francis absolutely was. So maybe Francis can say a little bit about that. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Lorna. Hi, Francis. I can't hear you yet. Sorry. Right, you can hear me now, can you? Yes, yes, we can. Right. Yes, we can. My microphone keeps turning itself off. Okay. No problem. It was, um, I mean, it was amazing during lockdown because it just coincided with a bit of a pause in curation for various reasons. But actually, I think the open space came into its own during, um, during lockdown. Um, we asked to do this special issue I think on in the middle of February, I had the call for papers ready by the middle of March. And then Catherine pointed out to us that what we were heading into with COVID and was this the right time for feminists to be piling work on other feminists. And so we immediately lost the special and it was all ready to go. And into that space, we lots of other things and people shared their ideas and so on. So it was fantastic, but to get a special issue, it did resume, resume later that year. We got 60 um, abstracts, but of course it was really difficult for people to do them because, you know, to complete the papers, I think we accepted 24 of those and not all of the ones we accepted got into, you know, people weren't always able to do the work because of the situation that they were in. But we did finally get a special issue, which was out um, March, April this year. And it's amazing. And if you follow that link that Marin has shared, you'll see that uh, we've got a special issue with a link to everything at Learning Media and Technology. Uh, but also we've all but one of the papers with an open access link so that's a page really worth bookmarking because you're obviously not going to read all those papers in one go, but keep coming back to them. You don't just have to rely on having institutional access. You can read all but one of them in open access. So it's a, an amazing achievement from um, the editors and particularly the authors in very difficult circumstances. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Francis. And yeah, if you haven't read it yet, please do have a look and explore that special issue. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what's happening um, with this research going forward. Mm. Um, the next item um, I wanted to share was a little bit about a shout out to all the wonderful curators who've um, been working on the Twitter account curation and been getting involved in Femme Ed Tech in other ways over the past um, few months. Um, we have had a different um, volunteer curator every month um, since February 
And as I do a little bit of the admin behind the scenes, I have the pleasure of meeting everyone and having some engagement with them as they go along their curation period. So I know quite a few people in the room have been curators and we are so deeply grateful that so many people do express an interest in helping us curate our presence on Twitter. We've um, been also improving the way um, we provide information about getting involved. So if you head um, to the link that I've posted in the chat, um, you can certainly um, have a look and find out uh, what's involved, what the code of conduct is for curators and also how to sign up. Um, it's really lovely, um, I think, to see different voices um, on the Twitter account and also different emphases for each month. Um, this month's uh, September's curator is Catherine Cronin and I could see Catherine just arriving in the room as well. So welcome Catherine. Um, we're just having a quick look at some of the highlights of what's been happening across the community um, over the past year. So I'm really looking forward to having you join us um, on the Fem at Tech Twitter decks um, for this month and really looking forward to everyone else. Um, if you haven't already and you're keen to volunteer, um, please do that. Okay, so we've been going through some of the highlights, the open space, the journal, and also how to get involved and the Twitter curation. And the last item that um, I wanted to highlight is coming up rather than something we've done in the past. And I know that Francis, Catherine and Lorna are all involved in making this particular project happen. So if I can hand over the mic to all three of you and um, we will have a, a chat about what's happening next week. I think we should let Francis kick this one off. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I'll jump in. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not actually sure how I can do this with my laptop perched on a pile of gardening books, but I can assure you that next to me, I have all four of the quilts um, on, this, on a, a footstool next to me. And if I could think of a way to get you to see them, might just post a picture to Twitter mm -hmm. later on. But um, the, um, the quilts are amazing. I lived with them. And so the, the sort of joy of them dulled to some extent in 2020. But I've come to love them again now that everything's finished. And um, it's, it, we've got, so uh, I'm just going to post you a link to um, a Flickr album, which I hope works, um, which has got pictures of the quilts. And only recently I managed to create, in 2020, I did um, a picture of the four quilts all clipped or clipped together. Oh, I'm pulled back. So um, all clipped together in two by two format. Um, they can be in one by four format, four by one format, or two by two format. And, um, it was a very poor quality, but uh, after several hours this week, Terry, my husband and I managed to do the thing, suspending them from our Juliet balcony for our bedroom and clipping them together again and taking a better quality picture. So that is within that, that album that I linked you to. So hopefully if you had a square in that quilt or you're just interested, you can uh, go and zoom in on that picture. Or you can go to the quilt website and I'll just put that in now. Uh, bear with me. I'll probably type it wrong now. Um, and look at the digital quilt. And in that digital quilt, you'll see images of the whole of each of the quilts, the backs of the quilts, but also, um, also, uh, a, this is the from the genius that is 
um, Anne-Marie Scott, I hasten to add, um, a little eye for all the quilt squares that have got a story attached with them. So you could kill a good half an hour or 40 minutes reading the stories. And, um, you know, it's just the most amazing thing. The digital quilt is fantastic, but I believe you me that actually seeing the quilts in person is a different experience. And at that point, I'll go over to Catherine to see what she says because she has seen the quilts. Uh, Francis, my heart leapt when you just said that because that's exactly the experience. I have been close to you and everyone through the process. Um, I really related to a lot of the tweets this week about people who had never sewn before because that was me. Um, you know, the recovering engineer who hardly ever held a needle except to fix a hem or something. But you encouraged me and the network encouraged me and I did my little square. Um, but actually to visit you earlier this summer and to touch and hold the quilts is just was just so moving. So um, it's just it's it's enormously gratifying to think that you'll do the labor of bringing the quilts from um, Macclesfield to Manchester and then Lauren and I will help and anyone else who's at Alt C next week can help as well. Um, and we'll make sure that as many people as possible can see them and be close to them and contribute possibly. <laughs> yeah, there'll be, a little, there'll be a little opportunity for people to contribute to the quilt um, in Manchester as well. Yeah, we've got secret plans and clever tricks, haven't we, to uh, <laughs> haven't we, to contribute in a very small way. And you don't even, I mean, if you can sew a button on, you could contribute. Um, if you could do a couple of stitches, you could contribute. Yeah. And I even had an idea, Marin, and this is putting you on the spot. I don't know if you're having those lanyards this week or anything woven that's got Alt-C22 on it. Do you? Is there anything like that or are we all digital now? No, there'll definitely be lanyards. There will be material. Um, I believe that they are white this year with green on. So um, if people does it are say attending, it, it, um, it does. I think it has out on it rather than all yeah. C22. Well, I, I've dug out one of those from some other conference, probably. Oh, probably OER 19. And I don't know if you can see this. I've got a FemEd Tech badge on it and some uh, a little badges that says Ed Tech will not save you. But um, oh, it's it's this one says Association for Learning Technology. But I, we could cut out that little bit that says Alt and um, stitch that onto the squares that we're going to put in. So yeah, I might be raiding some lanyards. <laughs> Catherine, did you want to say anything else about what we might do? No, Francis, I think you've done a beautiful job there. I mean, I, you know, what's known is that the quilts will be there. What's unknown is that Francis has a few ideas up her sleeve and keeps floating them to Lorna and myself this week. And we keep saying, whatever you want, Francis, will be your acolytes will help. <laughs> There's a quilt folded up. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's amazing just to see that. That's stunning. I think it's going to be quite an emotional experience seeing them for those of us who haven't seen them yet. Because Oh, and Mags, Mags is here and she won't be at um, Alt. So look what I've got there, Mag. Oh, circles. And if you look very carefully. Come, come on, Mike, Mags. <laughs> yeah, she's, that's my mom there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I told Francis that I had used a, a, a swatch from my mo my late mother's um, stash. So that was a very emotional thing for me to see that Francis, with her genius for free quilting, which I can't do, had stitched mom's name into it. So my sisters were very moved as well. It was wonderful. Thank you. Well, Thank it was very Yeah. It was very enjoyable, Mags. I was so touched by the story about the fabric, the yeah. red fabric lying on the sewing machine when you got the, the inherited the sewing machine. Oh, so, so many things in that swatch because my, th that swatch was in honor of Cynthia Solomon and girls, mm. Cynthia Solomon is still teaching computer science to teenagers <laughs> in the boss. Just, just let me, let me put that out there in her, in her mid eighties, same age as my mother was. So it, it, the whole cycle of this, 
And also, I'll just say one more thing before I mute or cry, whichever comes first. I'm in the process, I'm in the last three weeks of, of um, preparing my dissertation for submission. So I just can't get on a, you know, I just can't, mm -hmm. you know, get on a horse and ride over next week, which is what I'd really love to do to touch the quilt. But I'll see it some way. I have a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can plan something, I'm sure, Max. Yeah. And uh, Femme, Femme um, Tech Quilt on Tour yeah definitely um and what was so lovely was that mags and i had this conversation about her square at the time i was sitting there um, quilting all the quilts because it's not obvious to you if you're not a quilter but um what makes a, a lot of quilts is the quilting you put on after they've been sandwiched together and more or less completed. Now, some of the squares didn't need any embellishment at all. I wouldn't have dared to touch Anne-Marie's silk, um, uh, silk square that was also beautifully intricate. But some of them were really, um, were really enhanced by having parts of them quilted. And, you know, I, I, that was the most scary thing for me because I was terrified of, I'd never quilted anybody else's work. And so in the end, I thought, you know, there's four quilts to do. There's no point in messing about. I've just got to get on with it. And so I just hope that nobody is disappointed in what they see. But I think a lot of you will be amazed at how it enhanced some of the squares, just having a little bit of quilting there. And I've got one more thing to tell you. I've been in touch with the People's History Museum in Manchester because I thought, um, I don't know what's going to happen to the quilts. And that's something we can talk about next week or today. Uh, but um, it would be lovely to have them displayed in a public setting by professionals uh, that where they were all fastened together. So I contacted the People's History Museum and they do have opportunities to do this. But if they decided they wanted to do it for our quilt, um, then it would probably be th three or four years down the line. Um, but it would be nice at some, at some stage for that to happen. But they gave me advice and they were happy. They liked the idea. Oh, I should show you that actually, that the, um, the way that the quilts fasten together is with backpack clips. So the edge on the edges, we've got the male and the female in the appropriate places and any of the two quilts can fasten together. And the reason that also matters is it is absolutely certain that I will never be at the center of a project like this again. But I'm very happy to help anybody else who wanted to do one. And I would be happy to create the sort of standards and specification for that to happen. Uh, but if another group wanted to make their own quilt, it comes to about 116 centimetres square and has the equivalent of, well, I'll have to tell you that later. Um, but um, the um, I would be happy to support you with that, which would mean that, you know, say there was a fem, four Femed Tech quilts and Group X quilt that they did together as a group any two of those could clip together at any future occasion and I would be happy to support any group that wanted to do it as long as I don't have to be the person doing it all so uh, so there are opportunities for the future um, I think that's all I need to say oh somebody yeah somebody else asked if you could add more squares to the quilt well we will be adding one two or three squares to the quilt next week with stuff that people at the conference do but there are other blank squares available for that to happen in the future and i'm completely open about how that might happen okay that's enough for me thank you francis and thank you for sharing um that i'm so looking forward to seeing it in person just like everybody else who's able to come and, and join and see it in person um, we'd like to just open up the discussion um, for anybody else who wants to share something and um, see if there's any other updates you'd like to share um, before we press stop on the recording and then maybe we can have a um, informal conversation as well but is there anybody else who wants to share um, how things have been going or wants to highlight a project or something that's been happening across the community.
So for those of you who've just joined us, um, we did have a look earlier at our open space, um, which is open to all, and Lauren, I was mentioning how new writings are still being added. Um, we also celebrated the amazing launch of the Feminist Perspectives on Learning, Media and Technology um, that launched earlier this year. And our TV shared a update on people getting involved, um, particularly in the Twitter curation. Okay, so I think I'm going to press stop on the recording and then hopefully those of you who'd like to stay to have a bit more of an informal conversation um, can do so. But for everyone who has to head off, um, thank you so much for joining us. And if you can join us next week in Manchester, then we very much look forward to seeing you again.